Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyana Muhammad wa ala alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'd ayya la habita fillah Continue on in our study of the difference between advising and condemning by Imam Al-Hafiz Ibn Rajib rahimahullah ta'ala The Imam in the beginning of his treaties he said know that mentioning something about a person that he hates to have mentioned about him is forbidden if the objective behind that is for nothing else but to dispraise and declare his faults and defects very important Imam Ibn Rajib so he began by laying down this very important qaida that many of the people don't understand because one thing that I found myself and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us is that many of the Muslims do not discern of course between backbiting and defending the religion as far as speaking about the people of innovation or an act of innovation or a statement of innovation or a creed or aqidah of innovation or a methodology or a minhaj that is a minhaj which goes against the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so many of the Muslims don't distinguish another important point that many of the Muslims fall into is they don't understand the concept of bid'ah that bid'ah, religious innovation when we talk about religious innovation, we're not talking about technology. This is bid'ah logowi. We're not talking about bid'ah as a linguistic term, meaning newly invented things, as far as one of its meanings. So we're not talking about the machines that you use, the cars, the forms of transport that we have now, and things that didn't exist in the time of the Prophet ﷺ, no. But rather what we're talking about when we refer to bid'ah, and when we go back to the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, when he said, Man fi amrina hadha ma laysa rad, Whoever innovates in this affair of ours will have it rejected. What we're referring to, what the Prophet ﷺ was referring to, was religious innovation, meaning things in the rela uh, related to Islam, related to your practice of the deen, and your understanding in the deen. These are religious things. We're not talking about technology and things outside of the religion and so many people fail to distinguish that another very important point that people fail to distinguish and this very uh, I had a discussion this very day at my work with a particular brother may Allah forgive us and him and, and bless us with and him and he was confused as many of the people and I've heard this argument before about the concept of bid'ah we were discussing a great imam who's known from Ahlul Sunnah that fell into bid'ah with regards to the sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and had some aspects of the Ashari creed with regards to making ta'wil of the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala okay and something very important for us to realize is that many of the great imams in the past there were there were many of Ahl Hadith and the fuqaha and others who had fallen into various forms of bid'ah from time to time throughout history. And one of the reasons being that there was throughout much of the ummah's history that the uh, Ashari creed was widespread widespread throughout almost all the Muslim lands and this had an effect of course on great Imams of Ahl Sunnah who because this is what the the environment they were raised in and the ulama that they some of their ulama that perhaps they t had taken from that they were affected by aspects of that creed with regards to the divine sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but they still serve the sunnah of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam by explaining the great greatest books of hadith and leaving great books of fiqh 
So although they fell into this bid'ah, it was not based on hawa. It was not based on their desires. Unlike some of the people who deviate, who are obstinate upon what they are upon, and they will not leave it even if you give them evidence from the kitab and the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the aqwal of the salaf, that it, they'll resist it and they'll stay upon it. This is not the case of many of the great imams of Islam and great imams of the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who preserved Islam, sacrificed, and left behind for us treasures. So, we have to understand that and we also have to understand that not all bid'ah is the same, and the people of innovation are not the same as well. They have different levels. Ahl bid'ah, mutafawit, wa ahl sunnah, mutafawit. Meaning that ahl sunnah and ahl bid'ah, they have different levels. So for example, the lay person, the average Muslim, who is a Sunni Muslim, meaning a sunnah in the meaning of khas, meaning that they're from ahl sunnah, that this individual, is not like the ulama that are that have their knowledge based on ilm wa basira and so on and so forth. And the alim is different than just one who is just a sheikh who has beneficial knowledge, who is different than the talib al ilm and so forth, so and so on and so forth. So it's very important to know that people have different levels. Likewise, with regards to innovation, people have different levels and bidah is of different types. And the way you deal with the people is different. And some that'll be some of the things that we cover in this treatise that Imam Ibn Rajab wrote. But uh, something that I want to clarify right off the get-go, and this was pertinent to what happened today, is that, so bid'ah is, is of two types in general. Bid'ah, mukaffara wa bid'ah, ghayr mukaffara. Bid'ah, mukaffara means bid'ah that takes you out of the fold of Islam. It are, those are religious acts that take you out of the fold of Islam. For example, supplicating to the dead, supplicating directly to the dead, thinking that they can intercede on your behalf, saying, Oh, Sheikh Abdul Qadir Ajilani, oh, oh, Tijani, oh, so and so, oh, so and so. Even if it were Jesus, alayhi salatu wasalam, even if it were the Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wasalam, you cannot pray to them, you cannot supplicate to them and in, seek their intercession. In this life, this is shirk al akbar. So that is a, a religious act, a religious innovation, which is also shirk, and is also the major. It is bid'ah mukaffar, and it's the major shirk. So it takes you out of the full salam. You cannot supplicate to the dead, and you cannot supplicate uh, to anyone except Allah Azza wa Jal. The other type of bid'ah is bid'ah ghayr mukaffar, and this refers to innovation which does not take you out of the fold of Islam and that could be for example someone perhaps if you believe that using dhikr beads for example if you believe that this is a religious innovation as some ulama believe this and say and they they have strong evidence to support that and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best but if you say something like that or something else that you know is just uh you know not from the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It could be a particular statement or a particular way of giving da'wah. So this is bid'ah, ghayr mukaffara. It doesn't take you out of the fold of Islam. For example, being a member of Akhwana Muslimin or Jamaat at tabliq or doing some of their uh, group dhikrs or whatever, this doesn't take you out of the fold of Islam. But it would fall under religious innovation. So every... So we don't say that a mubtadi'ah is a disbeliever. No. They are Muslim. They're your brother Muslim who, have, who has innovated in the religion. And depending on the level of their innovation, there's ahkam and rulings pertinent to that. And how you deal with them is not always the same in all time. And this is another thing which people fall into and fail to understand and have fiqh fi deen is some, is some of the brothers and sisters treat everyone the same who has fallen into bid'ah or has made a mistake. And they start by not giving them salams, not allowing them in their masjid, whatever the case may be. Speaking ill about them, warning others from them, immediately, without any either giving them some dawah or perhaps a person made a mistake 
and the person's whatever the person fell into is not uh, perhaps that serious, or the person is new, new to Islam. Whatever the case is, this requires fiqh fi deen. This is why this is not for everyone to try to practice those ahkam. Because not everyone has the fiqh of those ahkam. So it's very important to understand that bid'ah has different levels and the way you deal with people and different times when Ahlul Sunnah is weak, you're not going to deal with the innovators in the same way you deal with them in the time when Ahlul Sunnah is strong. When Ahlul Sunnah is strong and you're in a place where mostly the people are practicing the Sunnah of the Prophet wasallam, then you have strength and you're in a better position to practice some of those things. And those ahkam and rulings, to make it precise, they mabni alal maslaha wa mafsala. They are built upon the harms and the benefits, looking at the harms and the benefits. So it's, if it's harmful to make hajr of someone in a particular locality uh, who, who is from ahl bidah we're not saying just from your, from your brothers from Ahl Sunnah or something like this, but someone who is from Ahl Bidah, who's clearly not following the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ in their methodology for understanding Islam. And they're a person of desires. You look at, is there benefit? Is there going to be a greater harm? Are they going to flee from the da'wah of Ahl Sunnah more so by not giving them salams? Is not giving them salams going to bring them closer to the truth, they're going to come to the truth, then you have to look at all of those things if you have fiqh fideen or you have access to the ulama who can make that clear for you. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil.